This is a Stir Crazy Podcast Extra, Pandemics of Fear by Rob Nelson. Fears and worries about the coming of an unknown, uncontrollable illness have been a fact of life throughout human history, from the local to the global level. The causes of these fears have been many, but whenever the threat of a new illness has taken place, the people who encountered it either adopted positive strategies to deal with the crisis at hand, or made the problem worse by spreading fear, rumor, and blame for the illness. During the mid-19th century, the United States was faced with a new illness that was unknown to the continent and reached the level of a pandemic in at least three different years, 1832, 1849, and 1866. This illness was cholera. The unfamiliarity of this new illness led to many false ideas and negative outcomes. Some people thought cholera spread through miasmas or unhealthy smells or vapors, while others thought it was transmitted through atmospheric changes above them. Few during this time would have guessed that the actual culprit was unsanitary water systems throughout the nation, which allowed sewage waste to come into contact with drinking water. While 80% of people exposed to cholera were asymptomatic, cities and towns throughout the U.S. saw death totals in the thousands due to this illness. Between 1849 and 1851, for instance, outbreaks of cholera led to the deaths of 4,557 people in St. Louis and 5,969 people in Cincinnati alone. The large amount of death from cholera led to widespread fear and finger-pointing. Irish immigrants, African Americans, and those from the lower economic class in general were all blamed for these outbreaks, as were the poor living conditions unfairly associated with these groups of people. Religious condemnation flourished during these outbreaks as well. Many congregations were told that their sins against God were to blame for these cholera epidemics and that only repentance could restore the sense of normalcy to the world. In one notable sermon from the 1832 cholera outbreak at the Brattle Square Church in Boston, John Palfrey delivered a sermon indicating his belief that God was, quote, using cholera to straighten the world out, unquote. Misinformation, panic, and finger-pointing all made the situation worse when cholera re-emerged at different times during the 19th century. Not until the outbreak of 1866 in the United States were the origins of cholera traced to the water supply due to the discovery of a London physician named John Snow. This breakthrough, along with the development of a vaccine in 1885 and social movements that championed large-scale sanitation reform throughout the nation, all led to the retreat from cholera from the public mind. Even before the discovery of the vaccination, those who had experience encountering cholera began to recommend steps to avoid it at the local level. On August 9, 1884, the Grand Island Independent published an article by a Sir Robert Rawlinson of London who claimed to have lived through the 1832, 1849, and 1866 outbreaks. He believed that to stop the spread of cholera, it was important to remove foul privies and cesspools, and if done regularly, quote, the cholera, if introduced, will not spread, unquote. Likewise, it was equally important to Rawlinson for engineers to bring in an abundant and pure supply of water within the walls of every occupied house and that drains be present, quote, to remove the soil and wastewater, unquote. Rawlinson believed that if people could do all this to the greatest perfection, the spread of cholera might be contained. This information being available to the citizens of Grand Island was important for stopping the spread of cholera in this newly urbanizing area of the country. In the first half of the 20th century, another unknown disease spread fear and worry to families throughout America. The paralysis-causing disease known as polio grew to epidemic proportions during this time, and while polio was asymptomatic in as many as 95% of cases, this still led to the permanent paralysis and or deaths of tens of thousands of Americans a year. Not until the creation of a vaccine in 1955 was polio largely eradicated from the worries of Americans. Much like the coronavirus outbreak of 2019 and 2020, the fear over the spread of polio led to several nationwide reactions. When the New York Times reported in the fall of 1921 that then up-and-coming New York politician Franklin Roosevelt had contracted polio while on a summer vacation in New Brunswick, Canada, fear swept the nation. If someone as prominent as FDR could contract this disease, then it was believed that anyone could get it. 
Since FDR had been vacationing at a lake when he contracted the illness, this led to the unfounded belief that contact with contaminated water might cause polio to spread. Beaches and swimming pools throughout America shut down as a result. Others thought that the illness might be caused by soft drinks or too much rain or heat. The movie theaters were also closed, and some people refused to shake hands or even handle money due to fear of spreading or contracting polio. Polio came and went at different moments during the first half of the 20th century, but the disease thrived during the warm summer months and ebbed during cooler parts of the year. While polio touched every part of the United States, areas like Hall County, Nebraska did their best to stop fear from overwhelming people by getting the best information available into the hands of their community members. In August of 1951, the Wood River Sunbeam published an article with several do's and don'ts to help their readers take precautions to avoid polio during the dangerous time of year they were in. According to the Sunbeam, if polio comes, do watch for signs of sickness such as headache, fever, sore throat, upset stomach, sore muscles, stiff neck or back, extreme tiredness, or trouble breathing or swallowing. Among the list of don'ts, the Wood River Sunbeam advised their readers, don't get overtired by hard play, exercise, work, or travel. This means men, women, and children. Don't get chilled. Don't bathe or swim long in cold water or sit around in wet clothes. The article also asked that readers stay calm and do remember at least half of all polio patients get well without any crippling. The discovery of vaccinations largely eradicated the threat of contracting cholera and polio for Americans and people around the world. They also eliminated the fears and anxieties that accompanied these epidemics. During these hardships, local Hall County residents endured as best they could alongside countless other communities around the world in dealing with the havoc these illnesses created. Now, in the 21st century, new illnesses will force these same communities to endure and outlast new hardships in much the same way as in previous generations. This concludes Pandemics of Fear, a stir-crazy podcast extra by Rob Nelson. The stir-crazy podcast is on a break between seasons one and season two right now, but stay tuned with us for these weekly podcast extras, and we'll be back with season two sometime in late July. <laughs>